Assalamualaikum. My name is Ibrahim Hooper. I'm National Communications Director with the Council on American Islamic Relations. Uh, thank you all for coming here today. Uh, we're here today to unveil uh, CARE's Black Lives Matter uh, uh, banner, and we'll have uh, uh, several speakers who will uh, explain why we believe this is important to show solidarity with all those uh, challenging anti-black racism. Our first speaker is Nihad Awad, CARE's National Executive Director, who will, at the conclusion of his speaking, uh, will unveil the, the banner. At the, at the beginning, okay, uh, correct. At the beginning, he'll unveil it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the compassionate and merciful. Assalamu alaikum, peace be to you. I will start first by asking uh, Robert Macaw to help us uh, unveil the banner, Black Lives Matter. Uh, so go ahead, Robert. Thank you. It is truly hard to believe that only one month has passed since the murder of George Floyd under the knee of a police officer from Minneapolis. So much has happened since his death. So much has happened because of his death. From Miami to Los Angeles, to New York City, to right here in Washington, D.C. Protesters have filled the streets and demanded an end to racist police violence. From city halls across our nation to the halls of Congress in our nation's capital, political leaders have debated important criminal justice reform proposals that were once considered radical. From the deep south to the north of this country, Communities have condemned and removed historic monuments that celebrated and continue to celebrate the evil of white supremacy, including the enslavement of black Americans and the genocide of indigenous Americans. Finally, some, though not nearly enough, houses of worship, corporations, and athletic leagues have expressed solidarity with the black community and taking steps to confront anti-black racism in their midst. All of these events can be traced back to the outrage sparked by the horrific murder of George Floyd. But let's be clear, although we were all outraged by George Floyd's murder, we were not only outraged because of George Floyd's murder. We were and are outraged because George Floyd was simply the latest in a long line of black men and women murdered by police officers, murdered by police officers who were operating within a racist system that regularly, disproportionately, and inevitably takes black lives. The names of those lost black lives appear on the banner behind me. Tamir Rice, who would have turned 18 years old today, Eric Garner, Richard Brooks, Breonna Taylor, Imam Lukman Abdullah, Amadou Diallo, to name just a few. But there are so many more names that could not fit on this banner. So many more names of victims we don't know because their murders were not captured in a viral video. Whether we know or don't know their names, we must ensure that their deaths were not in vain. And we can help do that by finally and frankly confronting anti-black racism, especially in policing. To that end, CARE today calls on Congress to immediately 
passed the Justice in Policing Act. Although this legislation is not perfect and needs to go much further, it is an important first step. Today, CARE is also releasing its own proposal for radical reform to our criminal justice system. The policy statement you have in your hands has already been distributed to tens of thousands of Americans, including Muslim Americans, who will fight for these policy reforms at the local, state, and federal level in the months and years to come, God willing. As Muslim Americans, we have a special obligation to combat anti-black racism. As God says in the Quran, the various languages and colors of humankind are divine blessings, not signs of superiority or inferiority. As Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said more than 1400 years ago, no white person is better than a black person, and no black person is better than a white person, and no person is better than any other person on account on their race, of their race. And as a as our brother Malcolm X, God bless his soul, taught, anti-black racism is a moral disease that must be confronted and cleansed from the heart of America in order for our country to have a chance of healing and living up to the claim of liberty and justice for all. As civil rights activists, as Americans, as human beings, and as Muslims, we are individually and collectively committed to fighting anti-black racism, whether it appears in a family, a community, a society, or even at the highest level of government authority. May God grant us success in our efforts to promote justice for black Americans and for all. Next, we'll hear from Sister Fitra Mohammed of the Nation's Mosque here in Washington, D.C. With God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. I greet you, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. I serve the one who created everything in the heavens and, in the, and on earth, and who cares about us all, whose revelations directed all the prophets to teach about God and the day of judgment who raised his messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a mercy to all mankind. My name is Fitra Muhammad. I am Director of National and International Affairs at Masjid Muhammad, the nation's mosque. I am speaking as a woman and a mother of faith, created with the inherent ability to feel and respond to the pain of so many unnecessary deaths of our children. The voice of George Floyd was the cry of a son in distress calling for help from all mothers. Imam Wadith the Dean Muhammad, may he be in the pardons of righteousness, said, mother and women represent the whole of humanity. George Floyd's voice was a call of consciousness. There is a Hebrew phrase which says, my cup runneth over. I have more than what I need. People all over the world are crying, enough is enough. My people, African Americans were born in a society that never intended for them to be free. Driven to escape the cruel life of bondage, they resisted, persisted, and miraculously survived. 
There are countless numbers of recorded instances of mutinies aboard slave ships, countless attempted escapes, countless bobby, bloody revolts on plantations. Oppression, injustice, and ignorance is a crime against all of humanity. It is a burden on every soul. You have those who ask the validity, the question of removing the Confederate statues that were created as heroic figures to be honored in history. When in fact, the Confederate statues and flag represent a racist mentality willing to die to protect the status quo, the establishment of buying, selling, and owning men, women, and babies as human commodity. If not now, when is the time to right the wrongs? If not now, when will we learn that separating babies from their mothers and then caging them is a shameful act? The judgment is coming. If not now, when is the time to stamp out wickedness that wants to steal the innocence born into a society of either black suffering or white privilege? Racism is reinforced by white divine images. Imam Wadifudi Muhammad, may he be in the garden of paradise, said, what would happen if people sat in churches throughout the world for centuries with the image of an African-American man as their savior? He further said, whenever a people give you their images in worship, Racism is in that religion. He warned of the danger that would affect the psychological minds of African Americans seeing a white image of Jesus as God. Erecting divine images of any color are against all the Abrahamic traditions. Our religious leaders have failed us. Read your scriptures. This is a great day. People of faith are succeeding to overcome their differences and achieve living together in peace and harmony as God intended for all of us, for all of humanity. The protesters are multicultural, multi-ethnic, and multi-generational. Corporate America, community and government leaders are speaking up, supporting and enacting revolutionary change within their power. This is a great day. This is the day of reckoning. We must rise above the messages in the schemes of Satan that keep us divided, confused, and suffering messages that cloud our ability to face truth, our ability to reason, our ability to believe in a better human life that shares empathy, understanding, and compassion towards each other. We must vote to end the evils that haunt us all with love and respect all things are possible. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Fitra. Next we'll hear from Zainab Chowdhury, CARES Director of Maryland Outreach. Assalamu alaikum, bismillah rahman rahim Today is a very important day for many reasons. Today we mark one month since George Floyd was murdered by police. And in that time, we've seen an uprising across the country. An uprising that's fueled by grief, by anger, by outrage at the injustices that continue to perpetuate against our black brothers and sisters around the country and around the world. 
as we mark this occasion by affirming our commitment to standing up for justice and equality for all communities, especially black communities in our country, we can't ignore the legacy of systemic racism and white supremacy in our country. We have an obligation, each and every single one of us, to stand up. inshallah to continue to pledge to fight against white supremacy and challenge the forces that continue to divide us may god unite all of us and continue to give us the strength the courage and the insight to continue to speak truth to power and demand change in the halls of power and on the streets within our cities thank you sister zayn and to conclude uh, we'll hear from imam johari malik who is a prominent uh, imam in the Washington, D.C. area and nationally. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Today is a significant day for all of us in that it is a day where we are standing before the halls of Congress with the leadership of CARE saying that those of us who are concerned about the issues of police violence, that it is time to take a stand and ask Congress to act, not in Washington, D.C. or in Maryland or Virginia, but throughout all of the states of the United States of America, to stand to ask the government to fulfill its commitment to its people to provide freedom, justice, and equality for all of its citizens. The reality today is because just as in the past, we have experienced a lack of government oversight by the federal government. We have seen abuses in local and city governments with its policing, just as Dr. King during the civil rights movement needed the federal government to act in order to provide safety and security for its citizens against local policing. Today, CARE is put forward along with other allies, black, white, red, yellow, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Sikh, Jain, Zoroastrian, calling on everyone to demand from our government that the federal government take action to protect its citizens, to know today the issue of Black Lives Matters is fundamental because until Black Lives Matters, nobody's life matters. Those who can be exploited because of their race or their gender, because of those issues, they lie at the feet of the civil rights of every American. And if we want to raise that issue, we need to raise the condition of the protections under law for blacks who live in this country. As a Muslim, we're asking God Almighty to establish the kind of justice that God would be pleased with. And to know, as Thomas Jefferson said, under the conditions of writing about the Constitution of the United States, he said, I fear that the hand of God will not rest until we do something about establishing justice for those Africans who were enslaved in America. Today, many of us are saying we might breathe easy today because you and I are not the ones with the foot of the government on our necks. I want us to redouble our efforts to say that I cannot breathe until black people can breathe. I cannot breathe until Latinos who are uh, subject to immigration exploitation, until they can breathe. I can't breathe until social justice is equal for everyone in every state of the United States. Going back to the days on this unfurled banner of Emmett Till, to say that if there isn't justice for everyone, there's justice for no one. And so we ask everyone to join today with the Council on American Islamic Relations to stand for justice in this nation, that God might forgive us to allow us the opportunity to right our wrongs, that we might be a justice-based society, 
a society with liberty and justice for all, if you agree with me, wherever you are, in whatever way you believe, to say amen, amen. that God might bless us today, that we put an end to racist and police violence in America. Assalamu alaikum. I want you to know for the record I'm using hand sanitizer. Provided by care. Uh, and we're all maintaining distance. Well, that concludes our news conference. Uh, I neglected in the beginning to say in the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, so I'll say it here at the end. Uh, and if anyone uh, would like to continue receiving CARES uh, emails, go to CAIR.com and register. And thank you for coming. Great job. Very thoughtful, guys. Especially starting with Emmett Till. Good. To your car. I'm, I'm actually looking for